Uh, good evening and welcome to the January 18th, 2024 Board of Directors meeting and for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we begin, begin with the public input statement, uh, on the agenda, it has us finishing with an executive session. We need to table that until February 1st. We're collecting more information. So we need a motion to do that. A motion to table that. Second. Item. Second. All in favor? So first on our agenda is the public input statement uh, read by our board chair, vice chair. The first public input session is a 21 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. Each speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, for example, matters involving personnel, cannot be made during public input. We as a community pledge to treat each other as we wish to be treated. We pledge to seek understanding when there may be disagreement. Regardless of outcomes or opinions, we pledge to move forward with respect. This is a time for comments or, and or questions for the board, but please be aware that questions may not be able to be answered at this meeting. Thank you. Uh, do we have public input at this time? Yeah, my name is Kenneth Touch. I live here in town, and I regret to have to say that I was informed yesterday with one of my customers, I'm in a small auto body shop here in town. He had told me, it was just, I think it was 17, 17 year old senior, that he had actually witnessed some drug transfers in the lavatory. When I was in the military, we used to have what they call random drug testing, which consists of a urinalysis test. I thought maybe my suggestion would be, if this isn't been performed, it should be starting now because I really didn't expect him to say anything. I just asked him if he had witnessed anything because he'd been going here for about four years. So I'm, I'm trying to inform you folks that it still goes on. So thank you for your time. To clarify, I am a non-resident. My name is Joe Rafferty. I am uh, the state senator for Senate District 34. So I'm not sure I have. Can I speak? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Chair Lovejoy, Superintendent Beauvais, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here this evening. I wanted to stop in and uh, introduce myself and uh, as a potential resource for you in the event that you might need it in terms of any legislation that you see that you need clarification on or have concerns about, I'd be happy to answer any and all questions I could. I also want to commend you folks. Um, I know that you are facing numerous challenges in the position you're in. Um, I, you know, I'm just on the same type of board, just at a different level. Um, and uh, public education is certainly being challenged on a regular basis, um, but I commend you for your efforts and just um, continue working as a team. Make sure you're involving your parents, your teachers, your you know administrators, and most importantly, your students and staff, um, because collectively, you will not be successful if you're not all moving in the same direction. So again, I commend you for the, the work that you're doing. Um, I know those challenges, I, we experience them on a regular basis, and I know you do too. But I just wanted, again, uh, say hello, and uh, just 
keep me in mind. Should I be of any, uh, if there's a need, I'll be happy to help you in any way I could. Happy to answer any questions I could at this time if you'd like. But. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thanks, Joe. Other public input? Mark Roulard from North Berwick. Um, last meeting, um, Susan Shane mentioned that um, you guys had to edit the um, videos before they were put out. I think that's wrong. I think they should be, it's public information. They should be live so that everybody can witness it as it happens. Thank you. Thank you. Other public input? Okay, we will move on to item three, minutes of December 21st and January 4th. We'll look at December 21st first. I'll make a motion to approve. No, no errors? Okay. Those were the ones we edited? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And thank you. I think that's. Okay. Motion made to approve the a second. Uh, second. Where's All in the favor? Line? And let's take. Okay. okay. And, moving, and moving on to the minutes of January 4th. Hold on one sec. Do we have an, an extension on that one? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, you're right. I'm going to January. Thank you. I just want to be sure. The January is only one. Thank you. Any discussion about the January 4th? Yes. So, and I'm searching out where. So, in. So, in the section where Josh was talking about um, considering arming teachers. I think it is important for the sake of who reads the minutes that we include the reference to state law that was made. So I think you mentioned it. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And it's not here. And I, I think as people read these on the website, it's important to have that information. I feel like I put it in here somewhere. Hold on. Yeah, so. There's a definition of firearms, you're right? So that's that's fine. There's a definition of firearms, and there's a state statute against against firearms. I have no problem doing that. Um, that's not the only type of arming, you know. That's that right. is available to a school board, right? So I'm asking us to consider that. But I'm fine with what you're saying about firearms. That is state statute. That is correct. I want to do what you want to do. It would require legislative changes. Not if we're not talking firearms. So again, I have no problem with the <clears throat> with the edit saying. In regards to firearms, that is correct. There's a yeah, I think definition. The understanding was that it was firearms because we were talking about guns that operate using a handprint, and that to me is a firearm. Yep. There are. There look are... at page five. Yes. There was the piece where it's the paragraph where Ms. Janice asked for a comprehensive staff survey. Mm -hmm. That's where I noted um, oh, the illegal. Yeah piece but it was i did i said weapons not firearms so um so that is there did you want like the actual were you looking for the yeah i just i think when we put these out and we're talking put that in yeah members are having conversations about arming teachers i think that piece of information is important to, to be in the notes yeah. no i just asked this that's it's the specific state statute that regards to is in regard to finance. It's, it is a, yes. There, yep. No, I appreciate you asking. Thank you for your involvement. Um, so we're having a discussion about the minutes, and there was a discussion about um, army teachers last time. That was that was brought up by by me as a board member, and uh, and Ms. Wheeler is is asking that we just include the state statute so that community members that are reading the minutes understand the state statute in regard to firearms and that it is against state law to um, have firearms in schools. And I'm just I'm just saying, include the specific state statute. Because when I talk about arming teachers, I'm not talking specifically about firearms. I'm talking about providing um, a, a means to, to obstruct an intruder, should that ever be the case, God forbid. Um, so just a clarity on what the state statute is in regards to that discussion, I think is a good thing. 
Yeah, but your your comments were pretty specific of staff concealed carry, oh. which tends to re in my in my experience refers to guns and then other types of weapons, including guns that operate with a handprint. So those to me, I I think you did also did very specific mention ba bean bag guns and things Bags. like that. But yep. there is specific reference to firearms there that w was concerning to me, and I. That's fine. And I look forward to further discussion on this. Yep. That was not something we could legally decide to do on our own. So can we accept the uh, minutes as amended? Do we have a motion to accept the minutes as amended? To accept it. Seconded? Unless anybody sees other things. Um, Sue, before, before you, could you read that, what you just added before we approve? So all I put, okay, so again, page five. Do, do, do. Where are you? Um, it is the second, third, uh, third paragraph down. I just noted, um, Ms. Janicek asked for a comprehensive staff survey regarding Mr. Chavis' suggestion about staff members carrying weapons. She felt it was vital to have staff input prior to even considering the idea. The assistant superintendent also noted the fact that carrying weapons on school grounds is illegal in the state of Maine. And the legislative change to the law would have to take place but for, before it could even be considered. And then I am just going to insert the specific state statute in regards to firearms there. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Was there anything else in the minutes that we need to amend or discuss? A motion to accept the minutes as amended? Yep. Second? No. Um, I'll second. I have no problem. Uh, Who was the first? I'm sorry. Uh, I'll peg. The motion. Josh seconded. All in favor? And an abstention? Abstaining. Yeah. Yes. And one abstention. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item four. John Bresnahan, Mechanical Services. In our just a second, Don. Sorry. Um, at our last meeting, we started talking about longer term projects that we may have come up. So we've asked Don to come in and talk a little bit about some of the projects um, that he's been working on, but also some projects that we have that need to be considered as well. So this is not a decision making process at this point in time. It's collecting information, asking questions. This is attached a little bit to that grant that we talked about. I believe it was in October when you authorized us to move forward, at least to to um, complete a grant. Um, so, Don, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so, my job is really hard because I have to talk about HVAC. And unless you're my counterpart over here, Mr. Steve Ferguson, you really can't get excited about HVAC. <laughs> Mr. Ferguson is a licensed professional engineer. He's been working on our project since its inception. And you may have seen on the campus Mr. Bill Babin. He's the project manager. I'm going to go through a little bit of the background on some of the projects, but as Audra had indicated, talk about some of the next steps on some potentials. So uh, you'll also notice that um, I use some graphics to try to keep it interesting and on point. So first off, um, you'll notice that on the bottom I talk about being taxpayer focused and I think that that's really important because replacing HVAC equipment in balance with everything else that you have going on is a tough capital expenditure. And what we try to do is with the aged facilities, and I'll give you an example. In this district, three schools were built in the 80s. And when something gets a building in particular more than 15 to 25 years old, some of the components wear out and those should be replaced. And oftentimes what happens, there's 172 school districts in the state. What happens is the HVAC related ones, ventilation systems, electrical systems, they don't get replaced. They get further down the priority. And, but yet, isn't it interesting that we all came in tonight on a cold night and we expected what? We expected the heat to be on. We expected the lights to be lit. 
And that all doesn't happen by magic. Also, some of the things that happened during the pandemic was the legislature, and it was interesting to see the legislator that was just here. They passed a law called LD705, which requires, requires all school districts to have ventilation air. And there's no controversy on this. Ventilation air helps not spread contagious diseases, but it also does another thing. Uh, it actually helps cognitive learning ability. And I think all of you on the school board, uh, oops, sorry about that, uh, want kids to have the best chance at learning. So the other thing we try to do in balance is when you put in new equipment is actually reduce costs of utility and maintenance because we're not on an old piece of equipment putting duct tape and bailing wire and making it go for another year. And so what we did, at least on phase one, was we focused on three buildings primarily, except for the energy savings projects, looked at the heating systems, the ventilation equipment, and lighting. Again, back to HVAC equipment life. So that's 15 to 25 years. So even this new building, which is 1999, Okay, when we do the math on that, it's 25 years old. Wow, so some of the equipment should be coming in a new building, what is perceived to be new building, at the end of its useful life and should be replaced. So what happens, and it's a challenge for us, and it's a challenge for all school districts in the state, is Kevin in facilities approaches Denise and Audra and Sue and says, I need to replace this equipment. It doesn't make it to the top of the capital list and things get, the can gets kicked down the road. That just happens. And it's not just here. Like I said, 600 schools, 172 school districts in the state. So our challenge, what we try to do is take advantage of programs that are available to school districts and try to get those funds, the grant funding and incentive, and bring it forth to, I keep hitting this, to, uh, and I'm not Italian, I, I'm talking with my hands, and, and show why now would be a good time to consider improving the facilities. So what you don't want is this, especially in a 300,000 square foot facility like we're in, where there's 1,200 students, to make that call. No school today, why? We don't have heat. And that can happen when you don't replace or upgrade aged equipment, and it happens statewide. So, on phase one, which we're in the midst of building and will finish up by the end of the summer, we did a bunch of things. And we divided it into two projects, really. We divided it into energy savings projects, replacing lighting with LED lighting, putting in building insulation, things that were missed even when the building was built. I'll have you know that the architects and the engineers in their infinite wisdom in 1999 undersized the boiler plant in this building. Undersized the boiler plant in this building. So Kevin Moore, for 24 years has been having heart palpitations because on a day like today, both boilers would be running full on and he would hope and pray that one of them wouldn't break because otherwise we wouldn't be warm. He might even have to cancel school. So what we did was we did all schools, energy savings upgrades paid for themselves in a short amount of time collectively it saved $160,000 in annual energy savings, gas, oil, electric. The second thing that we did, and look at this now, because this is a once in a lifetime thing. It's hard to use pandemic and COVID and good thing in the same sentence, it just is. However, the ESSER funds that were available thanks to the kindness of the administrative team, they designated certain dollars to pay for projects, including what's a 
called a VRF project. Mr. Ferguson, I'm not an engineer. What What is a VRF? What does it do? Right, yeah. It's a, uh, VRF stands for variable refrigerant flow. And the system is refrigerant based, but it's a really efficient way of doing heating and cooling uh, together. And one of the reasons it was such a great fit for Hussey was because that school had a tendency to overheat significantly. And the student population, that was not good for the student population. So the VRF system went in um, without making a lot of disturbances. Um, it went in, it's operating really efficiently. It's one, it's one of the reasons that the Efficiency Maine gives grants for this system now. It's a, it's a system that they're advocating for strongly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the cost of that project's 1.3 million, 100% paid for by ESSER funds, government funds, and then on top of it all, because Efficiency Maine is trying to get everything electrified, right? At home, they're pushing heat pumps. Can you, can you put more heat pumps in your home? There was a check that was made out and collected the other day for $379,000. So not only did the government pay for the VRF project in a building that was very hot, Efficiency Maine then provided incentive because a VRF project, an electrification project, is incentivized. So you get almost $380,000 cash check. Now, I know that boards, communities, everybody is interested in, boy, we want more of that. But I have to tell you, this is kind of a once in a lifetime thing. And that's why we're, when Audra referred to the revolving renovation funds, that's kind of our phase two approach of with this old aged equipment, how can we present to you, and Audra's a thousand percent correct, on February 1st, for those 10 submissions that we put in on, on your behalf, all 10 could come back from the state and they'll say, they'll pick up a portion and then the balance will be financed at 0% for 10 years. 0% in today's market or any market is, is a good deal. But that's totally up to you. If it comes back and you don't wanna move forward with one, two, or all 10, that's totally up to you. But the good news is, and again, it's hard to get people excited about what you're seeing up there, but from our perspective, uh, when you put in new boilers like this and, you, and they're working so well that on a very cold day like today, when you walk into that boiler room, those boilers are off. And why are they off? Because they produce enough heat efficiently and it's being distributed throughout the building and, even, and it, even if it gets a call for heat, there's enough excess heat that's being produced by these boilers. So we're saving energy and you're replacing a main component of what is essential to educational services. No heat, no school. Have to keep the doors open for educational services. This is not a superfluous technology. This is essential for educational services. Same thing in the high school. Again, when I told that story, true story, talk to Kevin Moore, boilers just running flat out, flat out. And now these boilers on a day like today, they go ahead and they heat the building and they maintain, if it gets really cold at night, two can come on and will come on. If one fails, there's a redundant one. So we're redundant, we're reliable, and we're efficient. So in summation, for phase one, which again, we'll finish up at the end of the summer, the focus was on heating in those three schools and, and we'll finish the middle school boiler plant this summer. We did portions of ventilation addressing the law, LD705 for Hussey and the middle school and we did the energy savings projects at all schools. Phase two, which we'll hear about on February 1st, whether the, on or about February 1st, the Maine Department of Education 
will send a letter addressed to Audra and they'll let her know for the applications that we prepared. And these were stamped. Steve is an independent professional engineer. He does not work for my firm. They were also stamped by another professional engineer to show the Maine Department of Education these are the true needs of these schools. This is not a vendor pushing something that says, put our equipment in, you need this. Two independent engineers certified that certain heating equipment, certain ventilation equipment was required and grants were applied for. So that decision will come up about on or about February 1st. And the discussions I've had with Denise, Sue, and Audra were I'd ask you as a board to make a decision on individually on each school or collectively, whether you'd like to move forward based on the grant, we'll know how much and then how much uh, will be outright forgiven. So if it's a million dollar project, it's possible that 50% will be outright forgiven the balance or $500,000 would be therefore financed for 0% for 10 years. And that's done through the main bond bank. Because there's a lot of work that still needs to be done on our part in terms of engineering, making sure that we have the right equipment engineered properly and costed. So if the grant is for $1.21 million, can we build it because it needs to be by the law and by the restraints of the main bond bank, project needs to be completed by September of 2025. So again, trying to be mindful of community needs, but basic essential heat, ventilation, lighting for these buildings, nothing superfluous and saving energy at the same time. So that is the summation. Uh, we'll put it back in your capable hands after February 1st, um, and I'll take any questions. Um, the new boilers you put in, you mentioned how long things last. How long do those last? The, the new boilers, they'll last 20 to 25 years if properly maintained. And, and the maintenance costs? Is included. Just, is, is it maintained by you guys or, or our maintenance crew here? It's uh, Specialty Services is your maintenance company. Okay. And so we'll cover the first five years and then they pick up the maintenance. They have an existing maintenance agreement. Okay. Um, the, the other thing uh, that you mentioned, I guess it's, it's a question slash statement, is running on electricity, states bigger on electricity. But we hear from our business administrator that electricity rates are, are just outrageous. We're blowing our budget with electricity. So it's a, it's a concern, right, as, as a board member to know that electricity rates are, are going uh, astronomical. They're going through the roof. And then we're adding things that are electricity dependent. Um, so this concern as a board member for that. Um, and then the other thing is just a, just a comment. Um, you know, grants in the state are still tax dollars, right? It's just not directly to the school. It goes to the state and then hopefully to the school. Um, so I, I don't see it as free money. I, I, don't see, I see it as an opportunity. That's great. And I'm glad we're looking at those opportunities in regards to the district. But, um, you know, grants are tax dollars. And, and I recognize that. And, and I just want to be clear um, that all taxes are difficult on, on many of our families, especially Absolutely. the ones who have, who have homes right now that are, that are not warm, like a school, um, you know, th that they're being taxed. So we just try to be mindful of all that as we, as we look at these options. Um, so thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Uh, and let me come back to your comment about electricity. Uh, electricity, the rates on a commercial basis, um, one of the things that we're doing as a value-added service is looking at that commodity portion of the rate. Um, and there are opportunities to buy that commodity through uh, different end sources. So while we take care of how much electricity you consume on a whole, we're also interested in uh, lowering that commodity cost like you're talking about. And the, um, the push for electrification, um, I, I personally, I agree with you, and I don't make up the rules for incentive, and I agree with you in terms of how the tax dollars, and it's still a tax dollar, but 
This is a program in terms of paying for large pieces of capital equipment. Um, there's just not a better program when you have equipment that's at the end of its useful life. So, any other thoughts or questions? Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So, Kevin, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you want to <clears throat> do you want to talk just a little bit about your experience and how things are going at Huzzy and the high school? One hundred percent better. <laughs> Pretty basic. I mean, it's amazing what we have here now compared to what we did have. Going back to Dawn's comment about being undersized and being one short, it's it's been some sleepless nights the past 22 years, wondering if we're going to get through the night, knowing that they were undersized all along. And that discussion was taken way back when when the building was built. There were people that had them concerns, and I think Steve, when he came through, and when Dawn came through, and they kind of their walk through, they kind of looked at it and they went, oh yeah, we need another boiler here. So in the meantime, with these three new ones that we currently have in, I kind of walked through the boiler room now and again, like Dawn had just kind of addressed that this time of night, the boiler's not even running. Whereas before, the two that we used to have would be running full bore right now, trying to keep up with this building in unoccupied mode. So it's been a tremendous difference here. The Husky School, same exact situation. We just replaced 35 year old boilers that we'd had in our capital improvement plan for a number of years. And again, same situation. That building's pretty much being heated off one <coughs> boiler right now with a second as a backup. So it's been amazing. I haven't had the complaints as far as heating goes that I used to have at Husky's with the old pneumatic system. Whereas this system is like right on the money as far as set points go and what the room's telling us what it's doing. I mean, it's balanced, again, right on the money, whereas before it was all over the place. And it's kind of <clears throat> nice to be able to see what the building's doing now. Whereas before, you had to run down, check thermostats, kind of, I didn't have the computer-based network program that I have now to view what's going on in these buildings, to make changes to them when we see something's wrong or be able to log on to a computer and fix something possibly right over the computer rather than getting up in the middle of the night and having to travel to a school. So the luxuries have been, for me, a godsend. So if that's what the program that they put us into currently can continue on the road for us, what a great opportunity. We, we can't pass that up. Thank you. Any other discussion on that? I have a quick question. Can we get some kind of a comprehensive list of what second phase will mean? Point? Mm -hmm. Yes. And when we receive that letter, we will have um, documentation of what was approved and not. So we can certainly compile something. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item five, financial summary for December. <laughs> All right, Denise is coming up, and here is a quick <laughs> hard copy if you need it. I could like to just wait a minute. <laughs> Did this. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so the summary for December. 23 was shared with you and you have your paper copy uh, you can see that we are progressing well we have collected at half point through the year believe it or not uh, our income we're about 50 percent remaining which is true to form we have about 10 percent remaining that's unencumbered that means uh, most of the encumbrance money is salaries and benefits through the year so, um, so we still have things to spend but um, we're progressing pretty much in line with how we did in fiscal 23. And um, my big news about receiving a $280,000 check this week was just shared, so that's a, that's a good thing. And um, I'm not sure if you have any questions. Questions? <clears throat> no? Okay. Thank you. Looks Thank good. you very much. Denise, you're welcome. 
And moving on to item six, SRO grant discussion continuation. So prior to de December break, we had discussed the fact that the district had worked in conjunction um, with law enforcement to secure a grant um, for an SRO in Lebanon. So we had a pre an initial presentation. There was a re request from the board to um, have Principal of France check in with families and come up with a survey um, to ask families um, if they would support that or not in the in the building. And then more about the funding. What does the funding exactly look like? So we have that information again for this evening to go through as a second round discussion. Um, and Sue's going to talk through some of that. Sure. So the go ahead. Excuse me. As a as a first step. For those in the audience who might not know what an SRO is. Oh, sir. thank you. So SRO stands for School Resource Officer. And we have um, two SROs in our district currently, one at Noble Middle School, um, which is provided through the Berwick, in conjunction with the Berwick Police Department, and one at Noble High School, which is provided in conjunction with the North Berwick Police Department. Um, so we were, current, we were discussing, actually, a citizen brought forward a request last year to press to um, investigate the opportunity for an SRO in Lebanon, um, primarily because there are not um, a, a typical law enforcement, like the police department isn't in Lebanon, but they do get serviced by both, uh, originally the state police, now the sheriff's department covers it. Um, so we went forward with it, talked with Sheriff King, who's here tonight, and um, they applied for a, a COPS grant, is what they call it, and the, not for just an SRO here in our district, but potentially in other school systems as well. So what, um, and they were approved, and so now we're moving forward with the question of do we want to access that funding or not. Um, when we met the last time, one of the requests was just what do parents, um, and we only targeted parents actually because that's our easiest way to access information and, and survey people. So. Um, Heather LaFrance, who is the principal, was able to just put out a, a Google survey to, to, the, to the families and um, we had about a 40% response, so there's 164 responses that came forward. Um, of those 164, there were 152 yes responses to would, and, the, and there was very simple question, would you support having a school resource office for, officer for the Lebanon schools? So of the 164, 152 said yes, 10 said no, and um, two people just felt like there wasn't enough information to have an answer to that question, which is fair. Um, the other, and then that's, that's basically there. We did offer opportunities for comments, and there were a, a variety of comments based on a variety of different things. So um, from this seems like a no-brainer to absolutely not, I don't think that's a good spend of our money, of the 10 folks that um, that said no. Um, so there's that, just that piece of it. So then the, we just to get to the down and dirty of what does it cost in order to have an SRO in Lebanon with the support of a, um, of a three-year grant. I'm gonna pass this out to you guys. I think it so I worked these numbers with um, Sheriff King and, and Greg. No, we need more. Oh, need some more? Sorry. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Can I pass up? You can send them that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You should have enough to go. Okay. Um, and Greg, is it Zinder? Who is? Yeah. Who is uh, kind of the county finance guy? <laughs> um, so what you have in front of you is, and what we talked about was, what would it cost us to hire, what would a collective cost be for the county to hire a, an SRO for the town of Lebanon, the schools in Lebanon, um, and we went from a low end hire, which is a kind of a brand new person coming in, um, and this is accumulation of um, salary, all benefits, and some of the um, expenses that would come, like, uh, I have the actual data right here, but, so it's 
wages, fringe benefits, you know, medical insurances and all that piece of it. And then the additional operating expenses like uniform and cell phones and the things that need, you need to have in order to actually do your job as a, an SRO. Um, a low end hire is accumulation is 112,896.94 per year. Upper end established person been there for a long time, 144,709.27. So with that, if we were to just, and the way that it works in our world is we pay for nine months out of the year because the person only works for the district for those nine months. Um, our cost would be, if we did not have the grant, it would be a range of 84,000 to 108,000 based on what's going on. And of course, I can't give you hard and fast because we don't have the person that we actually um, would hire, right? And then if with the grants factored in, so the grant is an interesting thing. It's $42,000 per year, um, but it is not like a direct 42,000 off of our costs. It has to cover the grant, it has to cover the county's cost. And then whatever is left can come to us. So it sounds a little weird, but it ends up being like a $10,000 reduction for us. So with that taking off, um, again, so the low end new hire for a, a person with the grant included for the county is 70896 up to 102000 And then with our $10,000 taken off extra, it will range between that $60,000 and the $92,000 approximately. So obviously this is not uh, just a, a willy-nilly kind of a conversation. It's real money and we need to talk about that. Um, this then, in, the cost of the vehicle is an additional piece. It's a, a $50,000 vehicle basically spent over, um, we would pay for it basically over three years and we pay only a certain percentage of that, 66% of that based on what Greg and I talked about today um, because it was also going to be utilized in the non-school months by, by the county. So that's approximately 11000 for the for the three per year for three years. So I wanted you guys to have as close to the hard numbers as I could. I will never um, say that this is absolute, but it is a range for you to see. So Sue, so, uh, who covers the three months that we don't cover? Is that the county? That's where the county piece comes in. Yep, yep. And that's actually a big, so I don't know if I'm gonna explain this correctly, but I'm gonna try. So when I talked to Greg today about that piece of the 42,000 and making sure like how do we as a district benefit from that. So the county would only hire an SRO for us if we agree to do that. Otherwise, they're not hiring this person for any other reason. So that grant money has to be able to cover the county piece of it because the other part is, is as we know as taxpayers, um, our district will be the one who completely benefits from this person for those nine months out of the year. Um, and the other um, members of York County are not obligated to pay for that time frame. So this, this grant would help cover part of that. I, I'm not sure I explained that correctly. I mean, clearly, but I think that's the general gist of it. Um, so it's an offset for them. But they, they would take that person, whoever, um, if we hired, if, if a person was hired, similar to the way we do it with Berwick and North Berwick, that person sort of gets absorbed into the police force for the, the time that they're not working in the school system and their benefits. Necessarily be in Lebanon in the summer? Is that what you're saying? Uh, right. I would say that this is a county <laughs> position that is, Ooh. yeah, so like our SROs are in the town of Burke or North Berwick. Right. Um, but again, police. But they would not assign if, if we were to do this. I can't say that for sure. But I, 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 don't, I can't say that. I don't know that. That changes things. Well, I think it's a question of, um, so this is not a contracted Lebanon sheriff or a deputy. This is an SRO mm -hmm. for the Lebanon schools. So it is very different than what um, I think we just need to be really clear about that. This is a school district piece, not the town of Lebanon. Now, Sheriff King is here. He might be able to answer whether or not that person would be 
um, assigned to Lebanon, but I don't know that we can demand that. Can I rephrase sure. it to make sure I understand? Yeah. So this person would be hired by the county for 12 months, mm -hmm. right? They would work for the county for approximately three months, and the grant pays that first. Whatever's left over mm -hmm. is contributed to the school district because they're an SRO in the, in the Lebanon building for right. nine months. Right. Do I have that correct? Yes, I think that's accurate. Okay, and what was said is that during their, because they would be a county deputy, right. right, hired by the county, the county decides where that person serves. During the three months, they're not an SRO yeah. in yeah. Lebanon. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And the county will basically recruit and train that person? Yes. This is, we do not hire. We do not hire police officers. So, yeah. <laughs> it's up to the county to do that. Mm -hmm. And just, is there any, um, what happens after the three year grant is up? We have to make a decision whether or not we want to continue that or not. Because that would be the, the uh, so currently what happens for North, so again, the original SROs in our district did begin with a COPS grant. And then at the end of that time frame, after the three years were up, we met with our um, town officials and decided what we wanted to do in terms of going forward. So we just maintained that partnership with them. Um, and that would have to be the question, whether or not it would want to be continued or not. So we can step away if we choose to. When, when do you need a decision? Like when do you um, see a decision whether we are moving forward or stepping away? I think we deadline? need to make a decision by the middle of February so that these guys can choose to send that funds to other places if we do not want to take it. Because I think that's only fair. What happens if we do decide to do it and we have a vehicle that we paid? The, the vehicle, actually, they, when I talked with Greg today, he said the vehicle after three years belongs to the district. Even though it's being used during, that's, he, he's like, it's a three year, the vehicle is good for three years, really. Like, that's there. And so at the end of it, we would keep it. I'm not sure what we would do with it, but we would, if we chose not to go forward with it, <laughs> we drive it around. I don't know. Have we started any talks with the Lebanon selectmen yet? So the Lebanon selectmen have had conversations with Sheriff King. We have not had any conversations as a board with Sheriff King. I didn't know where you guys stood with things yet, so we really do need to talk about that. Um, and ultimately, we have to make, this is a school board decision in terms of whether or not we want to engage in this with the grant. Um, it is not the Lebanon select board's decision. They may have separate conversations on terms of a contract deputy, but it's... it's I was just saying... Um, like for sharing, cost sharing for the future? For the future. Right. Um, nope, we have not had those conversations yet. It's, yeah. So we have this new information. Do we want to think about it for a week or do we want to act on it? Are there other questions that other people questions? have? Well, I, I, would, I need to know, and I mean, I, Jerry had emailed me about this. I need to know where the selectmen are in their thinking, if they're even considering it. I'm but saying, I think what I'm hearing is, is no. it doesn't matter what the selectmen want to do. Yes, it doesn't. Our decision can't be based no, I understand okay. that, but I'm talking about funding. If they because that's doesn't the town cover oh, the county and North Berwick now they split the cost, right? Yes. With the school, there is yeah we we yeah. This would be an agreement with the county, not Lebanon. So it, it's a it would be a, at the end of the third year of the grant is the question about talk you know asking whether or not Lebanon wants to be involved with that. But I, I'm gonna Sheriff King is here, so I'm gonna put him on the spot for a minute if you don't mind. Just. In terms of, um, I believe you've had some conversations a little bit with the Lebanon Select folks, so maybe you have a better yeah. thought process than, like, because I'm not necessarily in the know one. Well, th thank you, Mrs. Austin. And um, yeah, I have had some conversations with the Lebanon Select Board regarding contributing to this. To this. Um, it almost, as soon as I started speaking with them, they started talking about having a contract deputy for Lebanon. So I didn't really get a lot of uh, traction with that. Um, and, and frankly, and I think this gentleman's right, it is a school board decision uh, whether you're gonna have this or not. Um, so, you know, I, and again, I, if, um, yeah, Lebanon is, um, 
I've spoken with Lebanon several years to have a contract deputy there to provide some, some service. Um, they don't have the appetite for it. This is another year where they wanted the numbers, and I gave them the numbers. I've offered to come up and, and speak with them. I just haven't at this point done that. But it just so happens that there's two collateral things going on at the same time. Right. Okay. Does anybody have questions for Sheriff King about the grant itself? I do not. I don't know. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I, you know, it, Lebanon is one of those one of those towns that, you know, we don't have a lot of personal contact with a lot of the citizens. You know, most of it's adversarial. And this is going to give us an opportunity to meet young people, to, to have some pro-social behavior with them, and to um, and really and to interact with the parents. So I'm, I certainly do want a, um, a school resource officer in Lebanon, and I just want to assure this board that they will be assigned to the school, that they will be at the school. So please don't think that they're going to be here and hear a call coming in, come into Lebanon, that they're going to rush off and take care of it. No, that they're committed to the school while they're there. And the reality of the situation is, is that the school, the SROs that we have, um, they, um, they do the school year and then they schedule their training in any conferences or anything like that during the summer months, and they take their vacation during the summer months. Actually, the um, RSO, um, uh, the SRO for Massabesic, when I looked it up, during the summer, he's doing nine shifts for us. So, I mean, it's, he's going to be there. He's going to be, you know, taking care of the school. And, and we, he, she's, uh, and Mrs. Austin's correct, we don't have a, a deputy for that. You know, we're going to be hiring for that, and I would expect input from the board of what type of deputy that you want, whether it could be a, a veteran officer or it could be um, a new hire. But I do appreciate the conversation, though. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> we want to take this for another meeting, or do we want to? Are we looking for more information? What would be, if we table it, what are we looking for? I think, do we have all the information? That we're you, have, I, you have what I can provide. Yeah. So I think the question is really, I know it's a hard one, but where, where are you? Like, are you? I think one of the things that I would have a hold off on is we haven't seen the budget. Well, that's what I was going to Right? Say. So this is a big piece of the budget. So sitting here and saying yes to this today mm -hmm. would not help us when it comes to trying to formulate our budget in the long run. So I, I think we're kind of handcuffed a little bit because we kind of need to have some sort of a decision soon, but we also need to figure out where we're at in our budget and our percentage and mm -hmm. whether or not we can absorb this figure mm -hmm. in our budget without extremely raising the taxes to our residents. Um, do we, we usually get our budget books the middle of February. Is that correct? You're still on track to receive that. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So could we put the decision to the end of February till we've had a time to look at the preliminary numbers? And I'll look out in the audience and ask, does that work? Where did he go? What you, he's just hiding. <laughs> Chair King, what do you need? What's your, oh, right what's your, what's your final? I know. Final answer? I'm sorry. The, the, the acoustics is bad. Okay, I didn't what's hear. the final, what's the date that you need us to be like, it's a go? Or, I, I don't, I, we don't really have a date. Okay. But I, I, you know, we are in the, I, again, we had three grants. One was for um, Massabesic. You know, they're all situated. I met with uh, the Bonnie Eagle School District, and I'm meeting with you folks. Okay. okay. When do we... I guess when does that grant close that we would well, lose it if we yeah. didn't say yeah? Well, 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 we have it, you know, and we're in, um, we haven't been given a drop dead date at this juncture, but, um, you know, I mean, again, I mean, if, if there is a drop dead date, I'll ask for an extension. But, um, you know, but that doesn't mean I don't, I don't want an answer because it's going to take a while to recruit somebody, to train them. And, you know, this is something that the school district doesn't pay, doesn't pay for if we, if we get somebody. You know, we're going to get a new person. You say, boy, this is a great guy. You know, we're going to send him to the academy. That's on us. So. Oh, at the end of February would be fantastic because we wouldn't start this until the school year next year. Yeah, good. Thank you. 
Excellent. Thank you, sir. We have some time to think about that. We do. I think just uh, these are my my thoughts right now. Since we're we're thinking about thoughts, um, it is it's, you know yeah it's really expensive. Um, I think about the the intent like what is the definition the the role the intent of a school resource officer, and uh, I. I I recognize that Lebanon students, they attend our middle school and high school. Is that correct? Yes. Right. And we have school resource officers in our middle school and high school. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So our students are exposed to law enforcement in schools like North Berwick and Berwick students yeah. to the same level, correct? Mm -hmm. I would say that in North Berwick and in Berwick, there's a little more interaction with the police departments and the police officers from those departments in those schools. Right. Plus we do the DARE program. Because yeah. they have local, they have yeah, local, they have and, and our county officers could do that in Lebanon Elementary if they so choose. We don't have any policy that would say they can't come into our school and interact with kids, much like the Berwick and Lebanon Police Department. I'm not, I'm not saying that you should, Sheriff, <laughs> but I'm just saying we don't have a policy that says they can't, right? Okay. Um, you know, and then, you know, if, if so if, if if it's not about building relationships, um, you know, although I understand that that's a fringe benefit, I truly do, it, it really is about safety. Um, and and I, I just don't think school resource officers are the only safety mechanism we should be considering. I mean, we, we know about school shootings that, I mean, in a matter of a, a couple of minutes, it's over with. Historically, has been the case. And even if it was to happen in any one of our elementary schools, Law enforcement, depending on where they are in the community, are not going to, they're not going to be on site within those first couple of minutes. And that's a tragedy. Like I, I'm just explaining what's, what's true. So I think it's a matter of having that larger conversation about safety and wondering if uh, adding a school resource officer at Lebanon Elementary is really the right decision. And if I think as a board, if we're going to make the decision that our Lebanon students um, certainly would benefit from that safety mechanism. I have a hard time sitting here saying that our North Borough Primary, our Merritt Heard Academy, our Huzzy students don't deserve the same safety measure. And yes, I would actually suggest that we then put an SRO in every one of our buildings and figure out how we're going to float that budget-wise. That'd be a million dollar expense on an annual basis and we'd have to figure that out because certainly that can't be added to a tax base. So I, I do think that this is part of a much larger discussion. I am, safety is one of my biggest priorities as a board member. Safety is incredibly important, and we seem to be talking about one safety measure and not many. And so I look forward to continuous on the agenda, and I certainly will um, certainly share and, and bring more um, as, as it continues, because I do, knew, I do know we need to make a decision. Thank you, Inadra. What is the coverage plan? Yes. It was my understanding that the SROs that covered the high school and um, the middle school were also available to the other other elementary schools? They are, but the, you know, they are primarily located at the middle school and the high school. So they definitely, I, they, they definitely do hit the other buildings, but it's not at the level of their daily, you know, their daily. So stuff. like Officer Fogg no. at the middle school will teach DARE. He does teach DARE mm -hmm. in grade mm -hmm. at, um, the Norton School, mm -hmm. and then he's at Huzzy School for arrival and dismissal, and not every single day, um, but he's there. He's walking through the buildings. Sure. So, and North Park, actually, Chief Peasley is, like, is the man who really hits most of the elementary school in the MHA. He goes over. He used to teach there um, to the fifth grade until the fifth grade moved to the Norton School, and now Norton teaches the, the, the DARE program. So, yeah, they do. They really do work really well in conjunction with the schools and and um, make their presence known. I think Lauren had a comment. I do. Yeah. Thank you, oh, Lauren. <laughs> Hi. Um, my question is: What is what percent of the budget is one hundred thousand dollars? And you don't have to have an answer right now. Um, comment of: I will say that is absolutely very common for me to drop into or pull in to drop my kids off at North Berwick Elementary and have police officers on the sidewalk hanging out, saying hi to the kids as they get there. No, it's not a permanent thing. And then just <clears throat> as far as talking numbers, if you're talking about adding to the additional schools and we're talking, <clears throat> excuse me, 100,000 on average, then we're talking an additional 400,000 to stock the additional schools, not a million dollars. Okay, Lauren, so you're gonna have to, I didn't get the whole piece and I wanna be able to repeat your question. What was your first one about 100,000 yeah. and percent to the budget? Budget. What would the what percent, percent increase the to the budget, budget be? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. What is 
number looks like, right? Yeah. If you get dollars, please. Okay, I'm stuck. You gotta yell into that phone, Lauren. Or send me a text and I will read it out loud. Okay. Yeah. Okay, no, she's we'll not. Her husband's driving. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Safely, her husband is driving. <laughs> okay. So, what are your feelings about putting a SRO in all of the schools? Well, Dang. in a perfect world. Yeah, in a perfect world, that would be a, a good thing. But um, again, fiscally responsible. We know that we need to be careful. I think that our our biggest um, push in terms of this particular situation is really about, um, just like you said, Josh, response time and the ability to have somebody in the building who could handle um, a situation who's trained and able. Um, that would be, I think if that's our primary piece with this, um, not that that shouldn't also be looked at in terms of North Berwick and Berwick, yet again, the, the ability to get to the school is much quicker in those two towns. So that's a piece of it. Um, I'm reading Lauren's question. What increase to the budget is $100,000? Denise? Oh my goodness, poor brilliant. Put her on it. <clears throat> um, and yes, it's a big number, but when looking at the whole budget, what are we really looking at as a percentage increase? And then she said, it was very common to see Northburg PD welcoming students at MBES in the morning at drop-off. So, real. All right, um, so I'm not going to give you a percentage number right this minute, Lauren, um, because I don't have it. She did <laughs> but we'll that. get it. She did say that. Yeah, yeah, we'll get it for you. Thank you. And certainly, I publicly want to commend our North Berwick uh, police officers and our Berwick police officers for making our schools and our kids a priority and visiting them. Uh, that's just awesome. Yep. And, and they deserve the accolade, and the chiefs deserve an accolade for certainly making that a priority. It just makes me proud to be part of that that community, knowing that that's happened. I, I think that's fantastic, um, and, and just truly thankful for that. Thank you. I will also add that we did have the Nighthawks game today. That's our unified basketball team, and Chief Peasley was there. It was in a, the audience. It was a great game. So it yeah. is a good relationship that we. Great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So it sounds like I'm hearing we're not going to make a decision tonight. We need to consider the budget. Um, so I'm assuming we are going to move on to employment. Okay. okay. And so I, we have Lauren's question to incorporate yep. into the further discussion. Okay, so a few employment updates. The first one is uh, Maria Cannon, who is currently the Literacy Lab teacher and coordinator at the high school. She is requesting a leave of absence from March to the end of the school year for personal reasons. And so we do need a motion and a vote on that. I'll make a we motion have to approve that request. Do we have a second? A oh, second. Yes, sir. Um, Hold on. So we, What's the effect? And are you able to handle the effect of that? Yes. So um, play, Principal Dufort's here, but we did talk today and everything is all set for her should this be approved. So there are plans in place. There's um, support in the literacy lab. She's not the only teacher in the literacy lab. So um, it's a tight trans it's a it's a tight plan. So that there will be min minimal impact. Yeah. yeah. So motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. The next one we have a few resignations. Layla Stars, who is a Noble High School science teacher, she and her husband are relocating out of state. So she will be done um, by the end of the month. So we do need a motion on that. Motion to approve. A second. Okay. All in favor? What's our, what's our, just, is there a plan in place for that as well? That, that's posted. Okay. All right. All in favor? The next one is Hannah Farley. And Hannah um, is currently a special education teacher at Husby School, and she is um, set forth her resignation for January 26th. She's also relocating. She and her husband are moving. Um, we also have a plan. The plan is all set. Um, it is posted, however, prior to that time, the staff at the Husby School, we have two other self-contained programs at Husby School and a special education resource teacher. So they have um, worked through and assigned the students in the program to the different 
other teachers that are there and the supports that they have, the one-on-one -on -one, um, educational assistants will also be working in conjunction with those teachers and the students. Motion, so moved. Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor? As on roll. Thank you. Okay. The next one is a retirement, and that is for Pat McIntyre, Patricia McIntyre. She has been in the district 32 years. Says and Matthews. As what? You got the wrong name. No. Says Matthews on the agenda. Mac Matthews. Okay. It's McIntyre. Okay. okay. Um, so 32 years in the district, and she has put in her, re her retirement letter for the end of the school year. Need a motion for that? Yes, we yes. do. Need a motion for that? Motion. Okay. Yay. The second. Which regrets? Yeah. Which regrets? Yes. Many thanks. All, All in favor? Wishes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All in favor? That's it. Is that it? She yes. is. Yeah. Okay. Most of her career has been in Lebanon. Yeah. 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 Okay. And Pat Matthews was <laughs> retired last year. Right. No. Right. <laughs> Pat Matthews retired last oh, year. That's oh. why. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's like, Superintendent update. Sure, it's just a few updates. We had a long agenda. So um, the high school is in the middle of their midterms and it's going well. We did have an early dismissal the other day for weather, but we do have a plan to make up some of those midterms. Um, we have a band and chorus festival coming up this weekend for our high school students. We talked about earlier that the Nighthawks played their first game, and it was a home game today, and they did beat Bitterford. Well, they did win. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very game. close game. Sometimes when we've seen the games, you know, it's been a little mm -hmm. not close, but it was it was a nail biter there for yep. a while. So yeah. that was very exciting. Um and I just want to confirm, I heard from most of you about February 8th for that um, six to seven board workshop. And so we will um, just confirm that with Campbell. He's been on hold waiting for that. So we will set that up for February 8th. And for a workshop, it's a one agenda item. And that will be the board. Um, you know, we'll just go through some of those board um, documents that we we went through this summer. And did you say Starting time for that? 6 to 7 p.m. 6 to 7? Yes. I'll bring some snacks. Yes. Okay. And is that? That'll be here. Okay. In the library. Yes. Okay. Any other? other? Nope. Thank you. Uh, final public input? Other, other for us? Yeah, Sorry. Other, other? Oh, yes. Other, other. You asked her. Oh, asked her. Well, I was looking at Any other, other? <laughs> Okay. okay. Now the final public input. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Sean Works, a Northbrook resident. Um, I'd just like to uh, speak about the Lebanon Resource Officer. Um, one of the things that Lebanon has as a reputation is a its the nickname is Lawless Lebanon for unfortunate reasons. Um, this having the resource officer there, I think will help act as also as a deterrent, at least in one spot to help keep, you know, if there's something that's going to happen, you're usually not going to choose the place where there are, is an officer. You would try to find other places. This would actually help act as a kind of an island and act as a deterrent. So I think that it's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other public input? Um, I think children's safety should be top priority. We should put all politics aside on that. Um, you know, there are other things like beanbag guns, other guns that can be used, pepper spray guns, to deter such a, an attack. Um, the other thing is, the gun violence is based off a lot of its mental illness. Everywhere we hear gun violence, there's mental illness involved. And what happened is the state has taken a lot of the funding for um, hospitals and mental illness facilities. I think where we have a legislator in here tonight, we should ask the state to pick up the, the tab for this because actually I believe it's the state's fault that we're dealing with this. Thank you. Other public input? Next on the agenda is adjournment. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. We got you. I did. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.